Yesterday, the House voted to remove statues of Confederates and other historical figures who advocated for slavery from public display on Capitol Hill. Some Republicans say the bill is misguided in an attempt to whitewash history, suggesting founding fathers like George Washington are next. To discuss, we have host of Mary Walter Radio. Mary Walter, welcome back to the show. Great to be here. All right, so Sean and I were discussing this early. It's really interesting because the House voted to remove these Confederate statues from the Capitol building. Obviously, has to go to the Senate now. But if you look at all the statues that they've re recommended so far, they're all Democrats. Um, <laughs> Republicans are saying this is whitewashing history. But, you know, you can imagine with Democrats, they don't want these figures displayed because who does it look bad on? It looks bad on Democrats. All these people were people who defended slave, slavery, who are being uh, removed. And so Democrats are like, yeah, we don't want it to look like we were the bad guys. Let's remove them. I can understand why they may want this. Uh, but, you know, we have to remember history so it doesn't repeat itself, Mary. Of course we have to remember history so it doesn't repeat itself, but that's exactly what they don't want. And my first thought was just like yours when I heard this. I'm like, this is great. We actually have them tearing down statues of their own party. It doesn't get better than this. They're actually owning themselves. This is fantastic. The problem is, is that there, no, most Americans don't know that these people were Democrats. Most of them don't. The Democrats have done a wonderful job in rewriting history and keeping our children ignorant when it comes to things like that. So, you know, they've done a very good job of saying, oh, there was the big switch if someone calls them out on it. So this is just more of the whitewashing of history for, oh, am I allowed to say whitewashing? I don't know. Is that like a trigger? Uh, uh, <laughs> whitewashing history, you know, for the Democrats. So of course I don't, and I honestly, I kind of hope every Republican votes for it just to get rid of Democrats on Capitol Hill. It's a good start. Uh, well, we, our company is actually complete now. We are pleased to be joined by Blaze host, Sarah Gonzalez. Sarah, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so this is interesting, right? That all of these people, as Lindsay said, are Democrats that are in these statues they're going to remove. And some Republicans are defending it because it's a state's rights issue. But it's an interesting conundrum, isn't it? Republicans are almost coming to the rescue of this, saying, hey, states get to decide who they send. Congress shouldn't be doing it. But I, it's, I'm torn on this because... You know, I, I, I agree with Lindsay and Mary that these statues that they're trying to pull out are all Democrats. And we almost need to remind people that it was the Democrats who were, you know, advocating for slavery and were the last to embrace a lot of these things that happened. Yeah, I couldn't agree more uh, with all of what you guys said. I would also like to say I, I do at least appreciate the attempt to get some sort of vote instead of tearing them down by angry mob. Uh, I definitely think that that is at least a step above vandalizing property that is not, in fact, yours. But I would also like to add that, you know, I would like for them to operate on the same standard that they expect for everyone else. So if we are supposed to throw the baby out with the bathwater, if we are supposed to say, even though, you know, this, this is obviously a whitewashing of history, but even though uh, these statues are up for a reason, these were men who did a lot for our country, we're supposed to completely discard that. Meanwhile, there's a 700-pound statue of George Floyd in New Jersey. There's a six-foot statue of George Floyd in New York. This is a man who held a, a woman at gunpoint. This is a man who was a drug user. And it's totally fine to disregard any sort of bad things that he did in his life uh, and, and put statues, er, erect statues up for him. So I would just like for them to pick a standard, finally, and use it uh, <laughs> throughout all of their arguments. Yeah, they're constantly changing those standards. But you brought up something, uh, Sarah, that I think I would like to continue down that path. That It doesn't seem like this is necessarily what the people want. It's more about what they think people want. Um, and there is actually proof that leaders on Capitol Hill are out of touch with mainstream America. A new Trafalgar poll shows this. It says that 80% of people say leaders ignore the will of the people, 63% uh, say they should. They have no action um, on the Delta variant. They're feeling very out of touch. We've seen this time and time again. Even there was that Monmouth poll that showed that Democrats and independents wanted voter ID. And so, Mary, it, it just seems like you have all these rules taking place um, on Capitol Hill from Democrats. And when you even talk to Democrats, they're like, ah, we don't actually even want that. 
<laughs> you know, this is a tale as old as time. Everyone wants uh, the other guy gone. They never want their guy gone. Their guy, their guy's good. It's the other guy who needs to go. So I don't think this is ever going to change, that we're going to be disconnected from Washington, D.C. and from the people who are supposed to be, quote unquote, representing us. But you do you ever think that the people in Nancy, Nancy Pelosi's district are ever going to not vote for her? Of course they're going to vote for her because she's their guy. So I don't see this changing despite those numbers. And that poll is very shocking. You know, Sarah, there was a report today that came out um, that was really interesting, and it, it's from the CDC, and it shows how this remote learning that's been going on, all the kids learning over Zoom, is actually negatively impacting minority students as opposed to white students, right? And you, obviously, there's a lot of reasons for this, broadband and access to internet. But Randy Weingarten, who is the head of one of the biggest teachers unions, tweeted that they need to adapt as the Delta variant develops, i.e., we probably don't want teachers back in the classroom. And so it will continue to affect minority students. This is at a time when all these Democrats talk about equity and, you know, getting rid of disparities. Their own government is continuing to, to show that it's a problem. Yeah, uh, Randy Weingarten, first of all, is just an absolute ghoul. Uh, she is just so perfectly representative of, uh, you know, the teachers' unions and what they really stand for, which is anything but the children. And it's just laughable that the Democrats, for as much as they talk about, you know, all of this systemic racism, institutionalized racism, if you look at the institutions that they point to, just as you guys were talking about with the statues, what do they all have in common? They are all run by liberals, all of them. So you look yep. at these liberals that are making all of these all of these uh, rules for the schools, and it's disproportionately affecting minorities. That's why they don't want school choice. They don't want minorities to get a say in it. It is at the heart of everything that they do. I would say that we do have institutionalized racism, but I would say that it is the Democrats, it is the liberals who are constantly pushing that on all of the American public. It's sick. Yeah, and we're seeing that come back with critical race theory and then pushing that. And, and so they're trying to almost go back down the same path uh, that they started on. Sarah, Mary, always great to have you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.